What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2021 Honda Pilot courtesy of Apple Honda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So I wanted to check out the new Pilot here today. For one, because I wanted to see Apple Honda's brand new building. It's absolutely amazing, it's huge. So I did want to see that, but also there have been a couple big changes for the 2021 Pilot as well. We'll of course be going over them. And I've always liked the Pilot since it first came out. And so in this video, we'll be going over everything from performance, exterior, interior, tech, sound system, all that stuff. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2021 Honda Pilot. First one being the LX starting at $32,250, EX for $34,930, EXL for $38,360, Special Edition, which actually is a new trim level for the 2021 Pilot. That one starts at $38,960, Touring for $42,920, Elite for $48,420, and lastly, the one we have today being the Black Edition, this one starting at $49,000. $9,920 and so that was all actually pricing for the front wheel drive configurations of all those trims if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that simply add $2,000 to any of those prices and so regardless of trim level though however power plant on all of those trims will be the same for the pilot powering this beast is going to be a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 262 pound feet of torque available at 4700 rpm power of course sent to front wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic which is now standard across the board for the 2021 pilot didn't used to be that way that is yet another change for this new pilot and by the way that nine speed automatic does also come with paddle shifters which we will be testing out in a little bit here but all in all zero to 60 time comes in at a very impressive 6.3 seconds reason i say very impressive is the fact that if you do some comparisons between the other three row suvs that the pilot is competing against let's say the toyota highlander 7.2 seconds to 60 hyundai palisade 7.1 seconds so 6.3 seconds really blows all the other three row SUVs out of the water, at least when you're comparing apples to apples. So that is pretty darn impressive. And we'll test out the acceleration as well here. But MPG numbers come in at 20 in the city, 27 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 19 city, 26 on the highway for the all wheel drive. Either way, they're taking regular unleaded fuel or the cheap stuff. So that's good. But so anyways, before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter test or acceleration test or anything like that in the pilot, I did want to mention there are some drive modes for the 2021 pilot it's going to be intelligent snow mud sand there's also a sport mode if you hit that d slash s button that's how you're going to put the pilot in drive but that immediately downshifts for you holding the rpms at a much higher level there's also an econ button by the driver's left knee that is a button i used to use all the time when commuting in my old civics what that does is it essentially limits throttle response it limits the shift points and it also reduces the climate control ever so slightly but in turn it gives you much better mpgs so that mode is going to be there for you as well and to adjust the off-road driving modes it's actually a button just behind that d and s button so that's going to be where you're going to go ahead and do that but essentially all those driving modes just adjust things like the shift points throttle response steering sensitivity all-wheel drive system engagement traction control really quite a bit quite honestly so that is pretty darn good so what do you guys say now having mentioned all of that i do have it in that sport mode still so let's go ahead and do a quick little paddle shifter test here let's see how quickly they're actually going to react for us here and here we go guys not bad ah, a little delay little delay not too bad though but reason paddle shifters are really on SUVs anyways is to do engine braking. For example, I'm going down a hill right now. If it were snowing, I would be using those paddle shifters to do a little engine braking because of course, if you hit the brakes, you might end up sliding. So it's not safe. But anyways, I would imagine that is why paddle shifters are always on SUVs in the end. So most people are not going to use them anyway. So having said that, let's do a quick little acceleration now in the new pilot. And let's see how quickly we can get this new 2021 pilot here up to speed. And if it feels like 6.3 seconds, let's give it a shot. All right, slight downhill here which is kind of cool i guess but anyways three two one yeah oh my gosh wow that actually really does throw your head into the back of the headrest 
dang man did not expect that out of a three row suv and i've reviewed i think just about all the three row suvs i've done the palisade i've done the explorer i've done the highlander this thing is dang quick except for maybe the explorer st that's going to blow it out of the water but other than that that's also going to be more expensive this thing is quite darn freaking quick for a three row suv i like that that was nice but so anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes it actually comes in at a respectable 120 feet for comparison's sake the highlander comes in at 116 feet hyundai palisade comes in at 129 feet so it's kind of middle of the pack but really 120 feet is quite impressive i know the volkswagen atlas the three row suv by volkswagen that does it in 139 feet so again 120 feet is perfectly fine for me and braking feel as with just about all hondas it's great there's no issues with brake pedal delay no soft spots in the braking anything like that so braking feel is wonderful in the pilot as well touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as the ride quality goes one of the things i first noticed in the pilot absolutely amazing i hit some seriously large bumps back there i got a speed bump actually coming up up here as well the pilot did absolutely wonderful so it definitely soaks up road imperfections quite nicely here so no issues for me there as far as the steering feel goes it is on the softer side i will say that but with three row suvs that's pretty much as expected quite honestly so you're not going to really get as much feedback really with any three row suv but i will say if you're looking specifically for steering feel mazda cx9 is probably where you're going to want to be out there but steering feel is just fine though as far as cabin noise goes that is seriously on point love the lack of cabin noise in the honda pilot and that's partly due because the pilot does come with acoustic front glass for the EXL trim level and up. You will also get acoustic front side glass if you were to go with the touring trim level and up. So that's going to really deaden a lot of those exterior sounds coming into the cabin. So for that reason, very minimal exterior noise is coming into the cabin. So that's pretty darn cool as well. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. One of the things I like about the pilot visibility is that those third row headrests are a little bit on the smaller side of things. So a lot of three row SUVs get very chunky third row headrest and a lot of times they go up to the ceiling and you can't see anything if you have that third row up and of course you can fold it down but what i'm really trying to say is because of the shape of the pilot and because of this third row headrest visibility is just about as good as it's going to get when it comes to three row suvs also rain sensing windshield wipers do get added if you go with the elite or the black edition trim level so essentially what that is is the windshield wipers they turn on automatically for you kind of like automatic headlights whenever the pilot detects any kind of mist or rain rainfall so that is going to be there for you as well but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 honda pilot all right here she is you guys the new 2021 honda pilot specifically black edition although finished in platinum white what do you think about that <laughs> Apparently it's pretty rare, but let's go ahead and start up front on the pilot here. Up front that grille will differ slightly dependent upon the trim level that you go with actually. For example, black accents can be found on the special edition and black edition trim levels. However, you will get chrome accents essentially for all other trim levels up front there. To the sides, LED low beam headlights coming standard with all trim levels. And of course they will come with that automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED fog lights can be found for the EX trim level and up down below and you will actually get full LED headlights meaning low and high beam if you were to go with the touring trim level and up and of course if you go with the black edition you will find that black edition badging found within that front grille as well and some added black accents of course throughout the exterior and you guys will see that I'm sure in a little bit but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the pilot here and so starting up top roof rails are going to come standard on the special edition trim level and up rear privacy glass can be found on all trim levels across the board as well as chrome window surrounds with the exception of the black edition, of course, being black window surrounds is what you're looking at right now. When it comes to the door handles, you will actually get black door handles and black side mirrors with the LX trim level, and that is gonna be a matte black. But essentially all other trim levels will give you body colored door handles and body colored power adjustable side mirrors. And they will actually be heated with LED integrated turn signals if you were to go with the EX trim level and up. 
Then take a look down at the wheel setup. They are going to differ pretty substantially dependent upon the trim level that you go with. For example, 18 inch alloys coming with the LX, 18 inch machine finished alloys for the EX and EXL, 20 inch painted black alloys for the special edition and black edition trim levels, and 20 inch machine finished alloys for the touring and elite trim levels. And again, you guys can see that lost black striping found in the side skirt portion of the bottom there. And that's specific to the black edition trim level. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back though of the pilot now. And so starting up top yet again, shark fin antenna found up top there, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, and believe it or not, LED tail lights across the board. That is not always the case. So I absolutely love that. We'll find some black edition badging. If you were to go with the black edition trim level, you guys can see that on the right hand side of the lift gate there. And of course, below it all, you actually are going to get a hidden single exhaust outlet across the board. That's one of those things where it's personal preference. I like the exposed exhaust outlets personally, but on the pilot it is hidden. But nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are round back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate There are a few different ways to go about doing that power lift gate is actually going to come on the EXL trim level and up And you will get a hands-free lift gate if you were to go with the special edition trim level and up So otherwise the LX and the EX is going to be a manual lift gate So I did want to mention that of course there is a button on the key fob as well There's also a button on the lift gate itself You just press that and it's going to automatically open up for you there too So a couple different ways like I was saying but once open up cargo capacity comes in at 16.5 cubic feet behind that third row at least if you were to fold that down that bumps it up to 46.8 cubic feet behind the second row and with all rows folded 83.9 cubic feet behind that first row and so for comparison's sake the highlander comes in at 84.3 so practically identical there and the hyundai palisade ups it to 86.4 cubic feet so a little bit more space with the palisade but still you get plenty back there i will say that the ex trim level and up is going to give you a 12 volt power outlet in that cargo area you will find cargo lighting for all trim levels across the board four cargo tie down anchors again for all all trim levels grocery bag hooks back there as well and a decent amount of in-floor storage as well a lot of times with the in-floor storage with three row SUVs it's hit and miss sometimes it is there and it's not that deep but actually with the pilot you do have a decent amount back there so I did like that but making our way to the third row legroom that's going to come in at 31.9 inches so for reference I mean even six feet tall this is how much space I have back there probably better left for small children when it comes to that at least and there are cup holders back there as well did want to also mention there's some rear ventilation found on the sides there for those third row passengers so that was pretty cool to see as well but making our way to the second row legroom that comes in at 38.4 inches again six feet tall this is how much space i have back there tri-zone climate control also coming standard across the board there is rear ventilation of course like i was saying across the board we'll find cup holders back there there's some coat hooks there's two usb charging ports for the exl trim level and up heated second row seats actually come with the touring elite and black edition trim levels gotta love that and in case anybody was wondering what trim levels get bench seating versus the captain's chairs Bench seating comes with the LX, EX, EXL, and Special Edition trims. However, Captain's Chairs comes with the Touring, Elite, and Black Edition. So depending upon the trim level, you are going to get a different configuration for those center seats. So did want to mention that as well. EXL trim level and up actually also gives you the second row sunshades. They are manual sunshades, but they are very nice. Anybody who has ever had a newborn or young kids know that power sunshades are absolutely amazing. And the ones that come from the factory like this are so much better than the ones you can get at Walmart. I will say that from experience as well. So love that they are there. And of course we have this awesome rear seat entertainment system 
as well on this one, which I absolutely love. It comes with two headphones as well, so the kids can put on the headphones and they don't have to disturb the driver and the passenger up front. So that is pretty darn cool too. And of course, that rear scene entertainment system not only plays Blu-rays, but it can actually play other things like Gold Pony YouTube videos and so on. So I do want to mention that as well. So that was pretty cool that that was there. But overall, seats are plenty comfortable though, and I loved the panoramic sunroof here. We got one in the front, but the rear passengers also have one back there so that was pretty darn cool as well but now it's going to make our way to the front seats now on the pilot here cloth seating coming with the lx and ex trims leather seating coming with the exl trim level and up heated front seats coming with the ex trim level and up actually you will get ventilated front seats with the elite and black edition and overall again seats are plenty comfy you do have some black edition stitching towards the top part of the seating at least on our black edition trim level here today love the red accents with the seating as well definitely looks quite nice so overall no issues whatsoever with the seating i love these little armrests that you can adjust as well that was pretty cool so you could raise or lower that armrest and it'll stay in that position so when you have things like that, it makes going on long road trips a lot easier for you, at least in the pilot here. So then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping, leather wrapped for the EXL trim level and up, L meaning leather, of course. Heated steering wheel actually coming with the Elite and the Black Edition trim levels as well. Then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Honda logo on the one side. And when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and the circular button, that is going to be a remote start. So as long as the vehicle is locked, you can hit that. It will start up automatically for you, warming it up or cooling it down, depending on what the temperature is like outside. So that's pretty cool too. Push button start though, coming standard across the board on all trim levels. That's gonna be located just above the driver's right knee. So all I'm going to do, is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. And so, but then once started up, as far as the gauges go, they are pretty nice. You got your engine temp all the way to the left, fuel information all the way to the right, and a fairly large digital display front and center, giving you things like your RPMs, a digital speedometer, also your trip A, trip B, that's pretty standard. But also when you need your next oil change, I found that pretty cool. You can go through your radio information up there as well. That was pretty nice. You can check out Bluetooth information. There's some navigation information up there as well it tells you when to turn left turn right all that fun stuff so overall it's a plenty nice get digital gauge cluster i will say it also lights up different colors dependent upon how you're driving if you're driving more eco-friendly it's going to be a little more green if you're driving less eco-friendly it's going to be a little more blue so now touching on overall interior quality power moonroof coming with the exl trim level and up sunglass holder coming standard for all trim levels it's going to be an overhead sunglass holder found on the roof there home link controls for the exl trim level and up and that can be found just underneath the rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors conversation mirror coming with the ex trim level and up that's something on the pilot i've always thought was pretty freaking cool it's kind of like a school bus mirror we can spy on the rear passenger so i do like that ambient blue led lighting for the touring and elite trim level so I like that the ambient lighting is there. I wish Honda would have gave you some options as far as the color choices go, rather than just giving you strictly blue, but do like that the ambient lighting is there. I think I forgot to mention what trims that rear entertainment system comes with. That 10.2 inch rear entertainment center actually comes with the Touring Elite and Black Edition trim levels. In case I didn't mention it before, I don't think I did. And actually to insert a Blu-ray disc, it's gonna be found in the front here, just underneath the climate control information. Just underneath of that though, you have 12 volt power outlet USB charging port, a wireless phone charger. I thought that was pretty cool. And that actually comes on the special edition trim level and up. Just behind that, you'll have dual cup holders and then an absolute ton of space just behind that. Really, it's one of the deepest cargo areas I've seen in quite a while. And you do actually have yet another 12 volt power outlet USB charging port within that as well. And there's a little tray that slides forward and back in there too. But yeah, a ton of space in that area. That was pretty cool. But overall, interior quality is fine. I will say it's not quite as good as some of its competitors. I actually think I like the Highlander's interior quality a little bit better now. I know the Palisade and the Telluride has things like suede headliners, 64 colors of ambient lighting, but overall interior quality is plenty fine for the pilot. I would be perfectly happy with it, honestly. Then take a look at the tech display up front, five inch LCD screen coming with the LX trim level, eight inch high resolution color touchscreen display coming with the EX trim level and up. Either way, you get Bluetooth audio streaming, Android auto, Apple CarPlay, 
factory navigation system comes with the touring trim level and up and of course you can check out your radio information up there as well and by the way when it comes to the sound systems on the pilot you will find six speakers with the lx ex exl and special edition trims if you go with the touring trim level and up you're going to get 10 speakers with 590 watts and a subwoofer and i do believe you guys know that is the one we have today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one actually more bass than i expected that was a ridiculous amount of bass for a three-row suv at least but sound system that was very nice that was plenty fine really kind of overkill for a three-row suv and i love it so sound system is nice but last thing on the tech display i wanted to mention is when you do put the pilot in reverse you will of course find a rear view camera across the board letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start the 2021 honda pilot is an iihs top safety pick that's always a good start front side side curtain airbags in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats real child door locks back there tire pressure monitoring system but also across the board Honda Sensing that comes with every single trim level and that includes collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, and lane departure warning as well. In addition to that, if you were to go with the EX trim level and up, you will also get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert love that feature as well but overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the new 2021 honda pilot amazing acceleration for a three-row suv that's probably the first thing i noticed the acceleration is great in this thing great braking as well so really when it comes to performance the honda pilot is really above and beyond when it comes to three-row suvs at least average reliability for anybody who was looking for that that's according to consumer reports that's okay it's not the best but it's not the worst and really overall the honda pilot is really nice and i gotta say i'm always a little bit partial to honda but at this point i do however see some areas that i particularly would improve upon if i were honda for example multicolor ambient lighting i don't know why i just like different colored ambient lighting for example the telluride and the palisade offer 64 colors it would be kind of cool if honda could match that digital gauge cluster i'm talking about a full digital gauge cluster would be super nice to see at least on the top trim levels of the pilot as well those are always pretty cool suede headliner i think would be super nice as well kind of up the interior quality a little bit there and overall a very solid pick quite honestly i've had actually several hondas in my lifetime including an acura rsx which you guys know honda makes anyways that was my first car actually so honda it's definitely been a company i've been very partial to and this is definitely a solid pick but want to hear from you let me know what you guys think of the honda pilot in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like so you can see what cars are coming next be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold